This Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra is by far the largest tablet we have ever durability tested. And yeah, I think I know what's going to happen, and you think you know what's going to happen, but there's that small chance, like with the iPad Pro, that we get surprised. This is almost a full millimeter thinner than the iPad Pro though, so I have my doubts. The only way to find out for sure is by doing a durability test. I was however super surprised that the box was shipped out this thin. We can already tell that there's no charger inside of it. Let's get started. This Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra tablet is huge, far larger than anything Apple sells. The largest Apple iPad is 12.9 inches, and this bad boy is a solid 14.6. Inside the box we get the TV sized gadget, along with the S Pen, a SIM card removal tool for the expandable memory, and some documents, as well as a very long USB-C cable, but no charging brick. As far as the price goes, this Tab S8 currently retails for about $1,099, which does match Apple's price for the iPad Pro. However, Apple does not include the Apple Pencil in the box, where Samsung does. This S Pen mounts and receives its charge through the glass panel near the camera lens. Samsung is still calling this guy an S Pen, even though it's very different from the S Pen styluses we find inside of the phones. As you can see from the S Pen inside of my Note 10 Plus, it's very much smaller than the one included with the Galaxy Tab. At least that's how it appears on the outside. On the inside, however, once we snap it open, it's a very different story. Tucked inside of the larger housing is the exact same hardware from the baby S Pen. It's like a nesting doll. It still has the copper coils, circuit board, as well as a little capacitor at the top that allows the pen to do its gestures and act as a remote for the camera. It does have a larger mounting magnet on the side, but the top half of the pin is just filled up with a large plastic spacer and one additional magnet to keep the pin secured to the glass. Very interesting. I imagine we'll be able to see how it all connects from the inside of the tablet here in just a few seconds. Let's continue with the scratch test. Samsung has made this tablet about the same size and shape as a normal piece of paper, just a tad longer in the hot dog direction. They've somehow managed to cram a whole screen, motherboard, 11,200 milliamp hour battery, and frame into a body that's just 5.5 millimeters thick. It's insanely thin. For Americans, that's about 10 razor blades stacked on top of each other. And as we see from the scratch test, glass is indeed the top layer of this technological sandwich, with scratches at a level 6, with deeper grooves at a level 7. This means that up here at the top notch, these two cameras are also protected by that same screen glass. Both of these cameras are 12 megapixels, one with a normal lens and one with a wide angle lens. It's kind of hard to get this whole thing in frame on my desk, but Samsung is still indeed using the microplastic protection all around the edges. It's the same clear clingy bits that we find on all Samsung cell phones. The right side is made from metal, with two of the four loudspeakers and a USB-C port. Flipping it over long ways, we can check out the top real estate, with its SD card slot, microphone hole, metal volume rocker, and metal power button. One of the perks of this tablet over the iPad is the external storage slot that allows for an additional one terabyte of removable memory in the form of an SD card. And I don't want to be keeping score or anything, but for the same price, this Tab S8 is bigger, comes with the stylus, and has expandable storage. As long as it doesn't snap in half, it does seem like a pretty decent tablet. Personally, I'm more of a laptop guy, but I can see why tablet people do their thing. It also has attachment points at the bottom for a physical keyboard. One hobby or profession that probably really appreciates a larger screen are digital artists. And I don't want to brag or anything, but I'm somewhat of an artist myself. I just don't usually use the screen side. The back of the Tab S8 Ultra does have the Samsung logo inlaid onto the metal. Personally, I think it looks kind of cool without the lettering in place. A little more subtle. The S Pen docking and charging location is glass, 
along with the covering that's over the dual cameras, a 13 megapixel normal camera and six megapixel ultra wide camera. They're definitely not the best cameras Samsung has ever come out with, but like I said earlier, this tablet's probably more made for artists rather than photographers. Speaking of which, I'm a pretty big fan of dinosaurs. Like Jurassic Park sounds like a good time level enthusiast over here. However, I did attempt to draw a dinosaur back in 2017 on the back of the Pixel 2 XL. And like I did an okay job, but let's see if there's been any improvement over the last five years. You know, I've had some time to perfect my craft. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Did I do good with this new dino buddy? Or should I buy a few more tablets and keep practicing? Feel free to be honest, I can take the heat. You know who can't take the heat though? Dinosaurs. I'll position the lighter over here on the weather app icon, since that seems to be increasingly relevant lately. Samsung has put a 14.6 inch AMOLED panel on this S8 Ultra, along with 120 Hertz HDR10 plus and it lasts for about 25 seconds under the heat from my flame before going white and getting permanently damaged. And it actually looks super cool. The adhesive between the glass and pixels seems to have bubbled up and tie-dyed a portion of the pixels in different shades, kind of like a burned gradient as heat moves away from the epicenter. Once again, this test doesn't show us much. I just started doing it six years ago and can't seem to stop. The last thing I wanna check though before we turn this tablet into a foldable is the fingerprint scanner. Everywhere online says this is an optical scanner, but judging by the minimal light and thinness of the display while setting my fingerprint, I'm curious if it's actually ultrasonic. We should find out soon enough. Luckily, even after adding my copious amounts of level seven deeper grooves over the surface of the scanner, it still manages to read my fingerprint and unlock the screen every single time. Nice work, Samsung. Finally, the bin test. Remember, for two years in a row, Apple's iPad crumbled like crackers, up until last year, when the new M1 iPad finally survived. The Microsoft Surface Pro 6 also survived, but none of them were as large or as thin as this Samsung Tab S8 Ultra. With the first bin from the back, we actually get some hefty curvature, but no cracking. It did, however, fight back and pinch multiple of my fingers very solidly between the glass screen and metal housing. Now, if it looks like this hurts, I can indeed confirm that that observation is correct. There are now parts of me inside this tablet in ways I never imagined. It is, however, still alive and functional, contrasting very much to the stolen portions of my epidermis. Flipping the tablet around and bending it from the screen side, we get a decent flex, but no creaking cracking or breaking. It's still frustratingly in one piece. Normally I try to stay objective during my durability tests, but today I opened this box fully expecting carnage, and instead it took a bite out of me while receiving no structural damage in return. And I am a decently large person, so according to the current laws of the universe, it should snap. I'm not sure what physics-defying black magic Samsung constructed this thing with, but the Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra has survived my durability test, and I'm very impressed. My mind is blown, and I'm gonna go rethink my life. As always, snag a jerry rig knife for yourself with a link in the description. Come hang out with me on Instagram and Twitter, and thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.